আসসালামু আলাইকুম বাংলাদেশের সবথেকে বড় অনলাইন প্ল্যাটফর্ম এক্সিস মেডিকেল স্কুলের পক্ষ থেকে সবাইকে জানাচ্ছি অনেক অনেক শুভেচ্ছা আশা করছি যে যেখানে আছেন ভালো আছেন সুস্থ আছেন এক্সিস মেডিকেল স্কুল মানে ভিন্ন ধর্মী কিছু আয়োজন আমরা ইতোমধ্যে প্রায় আড়াই হাজার ভিডিওর অ্যারেঞ্জমেন্ট করে ফেলেছি আপনারা সবাই জানেন এমএসসিপি কতটা জনপ্রিয় একটি ডিগ্রি তারই ধারাবাহিকতায় আজকে আমি নিয়ে এসেছি ক্লিনিক্যাল কমিউনিকেশন এপিসোড টু নিয়ে আমাদের আজকের সেশনের টপিক হচ্ছে কমিউনিকেশন স্কিলস অন চেস্ট পেইন আজকে আমাদের সাথে মেন্টর হিসেবে আছেন জনপ্রিয় মেন্টর ডাক্তার সামরান কাজি স্যার স্যার বর্তমানে সাউথ ওয়েস্ট অ্যাক্রুড হসপিটাল এন এইচ এস ইউকেতে কর্মরত অবস্থায় আছেন আজকে হোস্ট হিসেবে আমি আছি শাওন আপ্রো সৃষ্টি রংপুর কমিউনিটি মেডিকেল কলেজ হসপিটাল সেশন দু হাজার ষোলো সতেরো আজকের টপিক রিলেটেড আপনাদের যদি কোনো প্রশ্ন থেকে থাকে অবশ্যই কমেন্ট সেকশনে জানাবেন স্যার আমাদের সাথেই আছেন উত্তর দেওয়ার চেষ্টা করবেন তাহলে চলুন কথা না বাড়িয়ে শুরু করা যাক আজকের সেশনটি আসসালামু আলাইকুম স্যার কেমন আছেন শোনা যাচ্ছে ছোট scenarios you cannot avoid and every day practice we face it we encounter this problem so today what are you going to learn let's see uh, the slides first okay so so as shaun said my name is shamran kazi usually people call uh, me kazi in the uk and i am one of the specialty trainee in the uk so the thing we we're going to learn today is very very important one why you want to learn the communication skills um yeah um, one minute uh no screen dekha jacche na na screen uh well i'm not sharing at the moment so anyway can you see me it now Yeah. Okay, so what so what are the outlines today the outlines is very very clear one what are the competencies you need to achieve okay to be a good doctor and of course what are the competencies you need to achieve to work in the international medical fields in the uk nhs usa australia canada all over the world as well as your to improve your own practice so we first we have to know what are the capabilities you will be assessed you need to achieve secondly what we're going to do today we'll run a, a scenarios where shawn uh, will act as a doctor and i'll play as a patient and we'll try to show you actually how communication skills work followed by a quick mock on the communications that we will sh we'll, we'll show today and then the third things we got to have a look in terms of chest pain what are the questions you need to ask and how you need to proceed your uh, history and the lastly there is a real life scenarios one of the patient who was managed in the nhs 
So how the NHS manage this patient? And the, the most important today's session will be mainly focused on the cardiovascular disease. So we'll, uh, we'll see informations, latest information based on the different trust guidelines in the UK, NICE guidelines, NICE CKS guidelines. So let's start then. Okay. So in the UK, uh, you know the UK uh, medical education system, just like Bangladesh, five years. After five years, you will start your foundation. We, we have one year internship training in UK. So I'll be very frankly today, okay, you will try to, I'll try to give you as much information from UK system, UK environment, their culture. And the objective is if we can adapt some of their good side and uh, we can back bunch our system, our practice to them. Okay, so when a UK medical students, they finish their medical schools, they start foundation year one and foundation year two. This is two years of internship. After foundation competencies, they, they get sign off. So then they go for uh, specialty training. So from foundation year one to any specialty training, specialty training, they, it's based on one, uh, three to eight years. For primary care practitioner, it is now three years. Other specialty, specialty varies from five to eight years. But whatever competencies you are, whatever uh, training you are going for, whatever exams you are going for, any sorts of Royal College exams, whether it is the MRCP, MRCS, MRC, GP, MRC, Gynae Ops, there are few uh, competencies that you need to achieve. The problem, what happened with the international medical graduate when they come to UK, they go for a PLAV exam. Many of us, we go uh, coaching. And the coaching from the day one, they start practicing, practicing on different scenarios. And many of us, we don't know what are the things they are testing you. What is, what the objectives you should learn. So I said today's session is one hour. If I cannot finish today, uh, what I want to finish, it will continue. Don't worry about anything. Okay, we'll continue this in next session. But I want to tell you more about the basic stuff first, because you all are doctor, we are, we are medical student, we are doctor, the basic medical things we all know. And in the world of online, things are very easy to get. So what happened actually in, in, the, in the coaching, we go for PLAP2 coaching and from the day one, you are practicing scenarios, but you need to know actually what are the competencies the examiner will assess on you. Okay, so today session, you'll come to know those competencies, first of all. Secondly, it's not only the UK, I'm telling. This session you will help you if you are a third year, fourth year, fifth year medical students, clinical medical students. If you are a final prof, uh, student final prof candidates, or you are doing your FCPS even in Bangladesh, I think many of those things you can reflect on in your practice. Especially the third year to fifth year medical students, I'm telling you, the, the, the systematic way I will show you today, if you apply this to your history taking part, your short case, your long case, uh, you'll be very much benefited and you can be stand out. Okay, so let's see the competencies. Before the competencies, let me tell you something about the UK specialty training, how they conduct it. Okay, so you will not be surprised if you come to UK in the future. So in the UK, you will get, when you are in the training post, there are training and non-training post. You can get into the training post. Getting a training post is competitive here as well. You have to go through the exam. 
And also, if you have MRCP, I always advise the young people coming from other, other countries, try to get MRCP, MRCS, those degrees before you are moving to UK. This will help you to get into the training. And if you, if you can get into the UK training, your career will progress. Otherwise, what happened? You can work in the non-training post years after years. Your career will not progress. What are you gonna achieve? Well, you can make some money. That's all you can do. But if you want to progress your career, if you want to learn, learn something, if you want to compete in the world, then training post is very, very important. Okay? So in training post, what, what we do actually, what uh, we get one clinical supervisor and one educational supervisor. And we have portfolio system here. Your clinical supervisor is really, he's from hospital consultant, a senior consultant. So he will look after you in your clinical practice. If you have any, any problem, you can go to him. <laughs> and end of the six months, every six months, there will be an assessment on you. Your clinical supervisor will assess on you on the capabilities that I'm going to tell you shortly. Are you achieving those? Have you been achieved those? Then your educational supervisor. Again, Educational supervisor could be another consultant, or if you are a primary, if we are if we are in primary care medicine, then is really your educational supervisor is a, is a senior GP. So every week you can put two cases that you think you have learned something. You can reflect on that into your portfolio, and your educational supervisor is really look at what you are doing every week. So by this way, every week at the end of the six months, you, you need to put like 30 to 50 cases in your portfolio so that you, the, the, your education supervisor will, and the, your, your clinical supervisor, they will see whether you are achieving those competencies. Then after six months, again, uh, it will be again reassessed by your clinical supervisor and your educational supervisor. And end of the year, there will be an ARCP panel uh, assessment. And this panel will assess you throughout the entire year, your performance. And this performance will reflect on your portfolio. And they usually don't see how many patients you, you have seen. They will see those are the capabilities. Did you achieve or not? Okay, and this should be ideally in any training, medical training in the world, this it should be focused on. So let's see what are the capabilities. And uh, even for the communication skills, these are the capabilities you need to achieve. You need to look for, no matter what case, you're going to get it. Okay, so let's start. So fitness to practice. You need to show your examiner that if I pass you today, tomorrow you, uh, you are fit enough to go and see a patient independently. So how can you demonstrate this? Give me a quick example. We don't have much time. Okay, so I'll try just uh, fly through as, uh, as, as quick as possible. So fitness to practice. For example, I have a patient with central chest pain, moving to right hand, neck, shoulder, sweating, pain. So it's very clear. One of the diagnoses is MI. So if you can if you can diagnose this patient as an MI, number one, number two, you have not yet started any life-saving management. For example, A, B, C, D, E assessment. 
A for airway, B for breathing, C for cardiac, uh, D for disability, E for exposure, A, B, C, D, E, management, you have not yet started. Number three, you did not bleep or call your senior because this is an emergency. And you and uh, I also like need to tell you that PLAB examination, your competencies are achieved F2 level, foundation year two level. That means you just finished the internship. So they don't they don't expect you from like a, a senior doctor, okay? But they at least they accept they expect you to recognize an emergency, initiate the management. Third, call your senior your registrar to come down and help you, okay? So if you don't show this, then you are not fit fit to practice. And during your communication skills. If you don't ask those questions, how bad is your pain? Is it moving to neck, move, uh, moving to your hand, moving to your back? These are the questions you are not asking. That means you are not showing that you are fit to practice. Okay, and it's a big blinder. So this is so these are the things when you are uh, when we see these patients in hospitals, manage those patients in hospitals. We put them into our portfolio. Okay, at least three, at least three uh, scenarios, three cases. You need to show that you are fit to practice. Okay, guys. So in the communication skills, just print scenario. You need to ask about those questions that can kill a patient. Otherwise, you are not fit to practice. Okay. Uh, react promptly, discreetly, impartially when there are concerns about self or colleague. We'll talk about it later. All right, let's go to the next one. So important, so, so, so important, guys, I'm telling you. Club candidates who are listening to me today, maintaining an ethical approach. Okay, so you will be assessed on this competency. So what does it mean? Before I, I jump into this, let me tell you something. As I, as I said to you, today, my especially very uh, informal speech will know actually how UK system works. Okay, so I'll speak outside my slide as well, but I promise to you, I will take another session and cardiovascular disease, its management, its legislation, I will discuss. In the UK, when we see a patient, it's not only you protect the patient, also you need to protect yourself as well. Okay, UK medical license is not like Bangladesh BMDC license, there is a different. UK medical license after five years, you'll be, re every yearly, uh, there is an assessment and end of the five years, there is an assessment. And another five years, if they see you are not continuing your professional development, uh, then your license could be seized. Okay, there are some uh, conditions they will apply on your license. So let's talk about this maintaining ethical approach, chaperone confidentiality. So chaperone, club exam, there will be a scenario on chaperone. So according to the GMC guideline, if, they, if you are going to do an intimate examination, for example, breast examination, PR examination, parietal examination, parvaginal examination, testicular examination. So there is a guideline that has to have a chaperone. Okay. If you don't put any, don't keep any chaperone with you, and if anything happen if the patient complain against you, you will stand in front of GMC. So uh, as maintaining an ethical approach, you have to be aware of the current of the legislation that you need to follow during your practice. Okay, maybe in the future, I'll talk more about Shabar if I have any chance. Okay, then confidentiality is another very big issue, very, very big issue. 
So you have to make sure whatever your patient is saying is not going outside. Even the clinical uh, documents, you are history taking documents. There are confidential bin in the UK in every ward. You have to put those into the bin. Confidential bin, not in every bin. Okay, this is how much important the confidentiality. So confidentiality has to be maintained unless it is for the best interest of the others or the public. For example, coronavirus. If a patient has coronavirus, it is your duty to inform the public health to save others. So we'll talk about this, but this is what actually reflect on maintaining an ethical approach. Okay. There are some other uh, description as well. Now, again, communication. So third uh, competency, communication and consultation skills. So the second line I can just uh, quote, employees a full range, uh, employees a full range of fluent, fluent communication skills, both verbal and non-verbal, including active listening skill. I will tell more about this in my next uh, next slides, okay? But only one thing I need to mention, patient-centered approach, patient-centered approach. Okay, next is clinical management. Okay, when you take the- I have one slide for Huh, why not? We put on the slide for uh, how about now, Riyadh? Let me share this screen. Okay. 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 Riyadh, okay? Can you, can you see the slide? Slide show what's in our, sir. Ah, is it okay now? Yeah. All right, okay, sorry, sir. sorry, yeah, sorry, guys, sorry. Okay. So maintaining an ethical approach, we talked about this, then communication consultation skill, we'll see in, in, in these details. Then your clinical management, that's very, very important. Okay. So I already I already said to you, respond rapidly and skillfully to emergencies. Okay, which is very, very important. In PLAB, usually there are you will face two two case scenarios. It's called thin scenarios. For example, you will see a patient with sepsis, you will see a patient with trauma, acute severe asthma, severe COPD, uh, esophageal varices. So these are the cases you need to manage in your plab truth and in this case a to e management maybe we'll talk in, in details in future but the far, most important things you need to understand you need to diagnose this is an emergency one two initiate initial management three contract your senior anyway and in the management section you need to be aware of local and national guidelines in a timely manner okay let me tell you about this as well okay in the uk Usually we have a trust system. What does trust mean? A big area will cover by one trust and under the trust, there will be different hospitals, uh, local um, minor injury unit and many other units. Every trust has their own policies, almost similar, but there are some differences as well. For example, if you have a sore throat, what antibiotics you need to give. There is a trust guideline and there is an app there. And we all have these apps in our mobile. So we can have a look actually what trust uh, guided us. So usually in sore throat, for example, phenoxymethyl penicillin for five to 10 days. Exactly similar, almost all the systematic uh, problems, there is a trust guideline, you need to have a look. And another thing is very important to mention actually, what happened actually, in our culture, if a doctor's open a book, 
if your patient CEO no doctor is opening a, opening his book, that means he's not a good doctor. No, no. It is completely different here. In the UK, if you, there is a BNF app as well, BNF, British National Formula. Uh, if you want to, if you are doubt about any dose of any medicine or anything, for example, I had a patient a week before um, for emergency contraceptive, emergency contraception. So we have LR1 and there are a couple of other things. So I was, I was not sure actually what is the dose, Labonel. I look at the BNF, I made sure I'm prescribing the right things. This is actually, it should be. If you open the BNF, and I also need to mention you guys, in PLAB exam, in management plan, uh, they will provide you one BNF books there. And many of us actually think if I open the book, oh no, the examiner will not mark me well, actually no. If you open the book, that is good. This is who you are showing that you are safe doctor. Okay, you are safe doctor. You are making sure that you are prescribing the dose. In Bangladesh, uh, what happened actually in, for example, in pediatric case, I work in pediatrics, so I know, uh, I remember. In pediatric case, there is a sheet, uh, there is a big sheet of drug dose, and hundreds of drugs are people putting into their brain. Actually, this is not the case in the UK. You have a BNF in your mobile, open the BNF, and write the right things. Okay, that is the safe thing. So clinical management, we'll discuss more about later. Now, this is very, 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 very important, guys. Next competence is practicing holistically, promoting health and safeguarding. Okay. So what does holistic holistics, uh, approach mean? So the holistic approach mean actually you are not only managing his acute medical problem, you are managing his long-term other issues. Those are impacting on his health, okay? So uh, the psychosocial things, we'll talk, talk about this as well. For example, in our case today, I have a patient with angina, so he needs, of course, smoking advice. In the UK, we have smoking cessation program clinic there available. So you need to refer your patient to smoking cessation clinic if your patient is smoking. If you don't do it, you are not practicing holistically. In this point, as a trainee, you will not get any mark. Oh yes, I also need to mention you something. In the in the UK training, any any specialty doesn't matter. Any specialty, there are a few things you will be tested on. One is your clinical knowledge, and clinical knowledge is really they practice uh, they assess on your MRCP exam through your MRCP exam. Some specialty, for example, in my specialty, we call it AKT, Applied Knowledge Test. Until you pass your applied, applied knowledge test, you will not get your MRCP, MRCGP degree. Okay, tell me a bit, uh, uh, let me tell you a bit about the primary care, care medicine. Okay, this is my specialty actually. Okay, in primary care medicine, MRCGP is the final goal. And to achieve your MRCGP, you will have to go through three exams. One is called AKT, Applied Knowledge Test. So in applied, applied Knowledge Test, it is almost similar to MRCP Part 1, Part 2. You'll be tested on all the clinical medicine. In addition, there are 40 questions. Usually they have 200 questions. 160 from your clinical side. And another 40 question will come from your admin side. For example, benefits, many legislation, many rules, laws, those things. Another 20 question will come from your research, your statistics, how good you are doing clinical research, clinical audits. So this is called AKT. Next one is called CSA or RCA. And this is almost like uh, communication skills, in, uh, like PLAB2, maybe a bit intense. And the third and the most important is WBPA, Work-Based Placement Assessment. 
So work-based placement assessment that is based on your clinical supervisor assessment, your educational supervisor assessment, what I already mentioned. If you finish all those three, you will get your MRC GP. Okay, it's not only just passing the exam, it's not the things. Okay, so in, in, in WBPA, work-based placement assessment, Internal medicine, surgery, gynae, whatever you, whatever specialty you are going for, this is the same for everybody. And maybe that lengthening of time, curriculum is different, but the fundamental basic thing is same. And you will be tested on practicing holistically, promoting health, and safeguarding. So if you, if your patient, uh, if your cardiac patient is having smoking problem with drinking alcohol and you are not referring him to smoking cessation cleaning, you are not referring him to uh, alcohol uh, addiction service, then you are not proving yourself on this competency. Second thing is very, very important, guys. The, what are the impacts of the problem or the disease on the patient's family? Not only patients, their family and their carer. You need to also consider this. I had a patient last week. Yeah. And elderly patient. And also I need to mention, we need to be uh, careful about the bereavement, uh, sorry, about the confidentiality. I'm not, uh, we cannot mention any patient's name, patient details, even uh, in any, any, any field. So the patients, uh, elderly patients, he got, his son died from cancer, 45 years of age, six weeks ago. And last six weeks, his mental health drastically deteriorated and he has not been referred to any bereavement service so in the uk we have bereavement service so what i did i referred him to bereavement service there they will look after his mental health okay in addition to any mental health that i need to manage i'll manage in my side but this is the service i need to uh, available service that i can i refer to him then this way i practice holistically Okay, now next one, very, very important. Recognize and shows understanding of the limits of the doctor's ability to intervene in the holistic care of the patient. Okay, many times patient will ask you a question and you don't know the answer. There are many, many funny questions your patient is gonna ask you. And I'm sure you all face this problem. So what are you gonna do in this case? Very, very honest. I don't know the answer. Okay, I don't know the answer, but I'll try my best to get the answer and I'll come back to you. Okay, rather than answering something misguided the patient. So this is also very important. And the another thing I'd like to say guys, promoting health. Many of you may know already, Public health is one of my interests. I did a master's from uh, Queen's University in public health and I work in public health as well. So promoting health is very, very important. In our case today, uh, angina pain, ischemic heart disease, MI, stroke, TIA. If you don't consider health promotion program, for example, smoking cessation, I mentioned alcohol, diet, drugs, gambling, all those stuff we don't uh, mention in your consultation part, then you are not doing this promoting health, no. Next one is safeguarding. Very, very, very important guys in, 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 the, in all, over, all over the world, especially in the UK as well. There are many, many domestic violence case, violence against female, violence against men, violence against children. Those are the cases very important. You need to recognize this. And there are many services available, okay, for domestic violence. 
and you need to refer them to those services. If you don't do it, you are not practicing holistically, you are not promoting health, you are not safeguarding your patient. Okay, so now we understand this case. Let's go. Managing medical complexity. Okay. In some cases, you'll find very, very challenging. Sometimes frustrated, very difficult cases. For example, I had a patient, last week I had a patient, young man, drug addicted. So he came to me with his low back pain, as an ongoing problem. And he, first thing he asked me, after initial consultation, he asked me, doctor, can you give me diazepam? Can you give me pregabalin? Because he's a drug addicted, he needs diazepam, not for his back pain, but for something else. Pregabalin same. In Northern Ireland, this, the area I'm practicing, we had 70 people died from pregabalin toxicity. So I have to be aware of those things. At the same time, I have to make sure that the patients need. So rather than being frustrated, uh, you need to be positive, positive attitude. Why you are not giving this what he needs? Try to calm down the situation, manage the situation as much as you can. Then managing medical complexity, you have a patient, today's case, for example, stable angina, this patient might develop into unstable angina, may turn into MI, may turn into heart failure. So not only the GTN spray, the hydromorphine and oxygen, the acute management, no. If you don't show the progression of, of your care, then you are not managing a medical complexity. And same, there are many uh, other issues, especially the mental health problem here in the UK are sometimes very, very complex. So if you, if you need to show them how you manage those complex cases. Okay. So in our case, as I said to you, we'll manage the acute stuff, then we'll manage the chronic stuff. In my next slide, uh, the real life scenario slide, the things will come. It will be more clear to you. Now, data gathering and interpretation. What is this? Okay, so your patient present with chest pain, you need to ask those questions that are important for you to have a diagnosis, to make a differential diagnosis. Then you need to do the examinations as according to the need of the patient, according to the need of the symptoms. Make an investigations according to the need of the, of the symptoms and the need of the patient. Okay, so let me tell you one thing. When you see those lecture on communication skills, you think the doctors in the UK may see a patient half an hour, take those history. To be honest with you, this is not the case. Okay, I'm studying my ST3 level very soon. By ST3, you are expected to finish your consultation in 10 minutes. The question is how? If you apply those communication skills in your practice, trust me, you will achieve this. 10 minutes, 12 minutes, you can finish your consultation. Even if it's a complex case, maximum 15 minutes it takes. But ST3, they expect you to finish by 10 minutes without compromising the patient care, without compromising the information that you need to achieve. Okay, so. All right, now the next one is CAPS. Very important, CAPS is very important. Clinical examination and procedural skills. So what are the examinations you need to know? Almost 
all the basic clinical examination, breast examination, paradactal examination, abdominal examination, chest examination, respiratory examination, lumbar puncture, and many of the international medical graduate who come to UK, they struggle with one thing, IV cannula, especially in the children, people shake about IV cannula, how to take bloods, how to do ABG, arterial blood gas. So those are the, those are the clinical things, procedural skills you need to show. Easily in the, in the UK, F1 and F2. In this, by F2, people easily they learn it very well. How to, how to, how to put IV cannula, how to do catheter, then uh, uh, smear test, speculum, parvarinal par speculum. Okay, so these are the stuff you need to uh, get your skill. And the clinical examination, it's not only you are doing an examination, I'm, I'm doing a peer examination for prostate enlargement. And if you cannot interpret your examination results, then it's not uh, a point to do it. So you have to show them that I also know how to interpret the result. Third important things, students, listener, very, very important. Identify and reflect on ethical issues with regard to examination and, pro and, and, and procedural skill. Okay, let me tell you something. In the UK, we all have, we all covered by insurance, medical insurance. Okay, I have my medical insurance as well. And if I make any mistakes, if things go to the court, I'm reassuring you, this is not the common things, very rarely. It can happen, but it can happen, but not uh, very common, Some, it, sometimes it happens. If you make a mistakes and you, you ended, up, ended up in court, it's not only your GMC registration is at risk, it's not only this, your insurance will go high. Okay, the money you will make, a significant will go for your insurance. And if you are in a trading position, usually the trust, okay, they cover your insurance as well. But in some places, not all the time. Okay, so why I'm telling you this, identify and reflect on ethical issues with regard to examination and procedural skills. You need to keep a chaperone where it is needed. Okay, and you need to involve your patients. That's what you are going to do, why you are going to do it. And the last, uh, uh, this line, if you have a low, recognize the verbal and non-verbal clue that the patient is not comfortable with an intrusion into their personal space, especially the prospect, uh, the prospect or conduct of intimate examination. Is able to help the patient to accept and feel safe during the examination. That means throughout your examination, you need to make sure your patient is comfortable. And if your patient said, no, I don't want to continue, you need to stop it as soon as your patient says. So what, I, what, what we see actually, in the PLAB exam, we see, for example, knee examination. You are doing the knee examination of someone having knee pain. And you are not looking at the patient's face. You cannot identify the, 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 the non-verbal cue. Even though you are, you have done a brilliant, brilliant examination, you're going to fail because you did not meet those criteria: clinical examination and procedural skills. Then making a diagnosis and the decision. What I would like to tell you, actually, during the decision making. Here you need to involve the family. Okay, uh, let me give you an example. I had a patient uh, last week, a week before with multiple comorbidities and she approached end of life care. So I went to the, uh, the nursing home, 
visited her. And we decided to start palliative care. So we stopped all those regular medicines, started her on palliative care medicines. So to make this decision, it's very important for her family to involve, let them know why you are doing this. And what are the management will involve? And also you need to talk to them, they are concerned, and then time to time contact with them. This is the way actually, it's not only the patient care optimizing, it's also you can save yourself as well. It's very, very important from my experience, I'm telling you in hospital, working hospital in the UK, the more you involve the family member, the more you engage them, the more you clarify what you are doing with the patient's family, then your job will be more easy. Uh, it will, otherwise it will impact on your patient's care, not only patient's care, also on you as well. So making a diagnosis decision, of course, based on, on, on your clinical information, but at the same time, the decision should be shared with the family member or, or the patient. And some of the cases you need to take consent from the patient, okay? Whether you are allowed to talk to their family or not. Next, working with the colleagues and in the team. Okay, so let me give you an example. The practice I work currently, we have a clinical pharmacist, we have physiotherapy available here, we have mental health service, I have one mental health nurse, I have one social worker. And we have once in a month, we have minor injury uh, service as well. So what I need to know, I, I have to know that these are the service available for me. Okay. And whenever I need, I can involve them in my patient care. Like uh, back, pain, uh, back pain patient, almost every day, you will get one or two cases. In those cases, it's very limited things that I can do. Okay, yeah, unless patient has any emergency in normal situation uh, as a GP. But one of the very important things, my one of the option is refer him to physiotherapy. A physiotherapy who can assess him, who can talk about the exercise and those things. Okay, this, this is the way I can enhance the patient, uh, patient care. Then communicate proactively with team members. It is very important. That means, are you a proactive person or not? For example, today I have eight patients to see. I finish all those. All those. My my uh, colleague is struggling with his patients. Yes, uh, if I offer him support, offer him help. This is called you are a good team member. Okay. So and what happened? You know, in the UK. In your training time, every six months or even a year or, or, or in a year, colleague feedback, 10, uh, usually 10, in GPs is 10, I don't know the other specialty, 10 colleagues will feedback on your performance. Okay. And 10 or 10 plus patients uh, feedback you need to get, okay, to get your ARCP done. So working with colleagues and in teams. And in the in plateau scenarios, there will be one scenario where you need to show this, working with colleagues and in teams, okay? If, you're, if one of your colleague is underperforming or you saw a problem with drinking or anything, any, any, any significant issue, how you approach him, how are you going to manage this problem, uh, you need to show it. Okay, so let's go, next one. Maintaining performance and learning and teaching. So, so, so important. So maintaining performance, let me tell you about this. Every yearly you will be assessed, even if you are training or non-training, doesn't matter. End of the, uh, after five years, you'll be assessed again by the GMC. 
and you need to show you have a continuous professional development. How are you going to show it? There are called CPD points. Okay, so CPD points, for example, today I attended a course on asthma management. Okay, I'll get a point. Or there are some mandatory training as well that you have to do every two years, three years, depends on, for example, child safeguarding course, adult safeguarding course, uh, then ALS, ATLS. If you don't uh, do those courses, you'll be in trouble. Then in my portfolio, for example, what I'm doing with you guys today, I will record it in my portfolio under this section, maintaining performance, learning and teaching. Because through this teaching session, what I'm gonna do, what I'm doing, what is my benefits? My benefit is I'm revising my own knowledge. So this session I will put into my portfolio. What I talked today. Okay, then ensure, yeah, address uh, learning needs and demonstrate the application of this in future practice. Yeah, let me tell you something else as well. For example, today you made a mistake. Okay. For example, amoxicillin, a patient has allergic to penicillin and he prescribed amoxicillin by mistake. So what you need to do, you need to reflect on this. It's called significant event analysis. Under that section of your portfolio, you need to mention that today this is the mistake I made. Why did you make it? Maybe you are too busy, you don't know. You don't see the patient record properly. So mention about those things. Then what are you gonna do not to do it again? Those are the things. So you can reflect this on your practice. And here students and junior colleagues are appropriately supervised. So what is this? This is, if you are in the training post in the UK, no matter what sort of specialty, you have to participate in teaching teaching medical students, teaching nurse colleagues, teaching foundation uh, doctors. We all teach foundation doctors. Uh, apart from my role as a teaching fellow, I also, being a specialty trainee, I, I, I have to show my teaching capabilities. Okay, so I hope you understand this point, maintaining performance, learning and teaching. And in club two scenario, one of the scenario out of 16 or 18, I don't know how many nowadays, out of 18 scenarios, one is teaching. And easily it involves knee examination, abdominal examination. You will show your junior colleague or medical student who will be with you. Okay. Then the next one, community orientation. I already mentioned you have to be Familiarize with your local uh, health system, social worker, physio, minor surgery, those things you, uh, available in your trust. You have to be familiarized with nice guideline, trust guideline. Okay. So this is community orientation. How you involve the community as a whole. Then you see the cost-effective prescribing. When you're prescribing a medicine, let me tell you something as well. Actually, how UK health system run? UK health system is free of charge. And this is called, this is uh, under NHS, National Health Service. But we also have private health healthcare system here. It is very, very costly. Very few people go there. Okay, but most of the people, they go to NHS. And you know, the thing is that NHS, and the private healthcare, in terms of management, in terms of care, it is not a big difference, to be honest with you. What is the difference? The difference is through NHS, a waiting time could be long. Okay. 
and privately you can go the waiting time could be less but in terms of care i don't think so there is any significant there is any differences there okay and in the nhs not all the services are free there are a few things that they are not free for example breast augmentation okay and those are the things that are not free and dental services dental services some places free some places uh, you have to pay so you need to uh, community orientation is very very important you need to know your community resources okay so again let me sum up what i said So whenever you're going for a PLAB exam, whenever you're going for a uh, Royal College exam, you need to make sure these are the things you are going to achieve. You are going to assess. So today our consultation part, these are the things we'll see, okay? So this, that's why it's very, very important, guys, to keep you, to keep you aware of actually what are the things you need to know to be get, to get assist? So, hope uh, it is useful for you. Now, let's start our communication skills today. Okay. So, in any communication uh, case scenarios, the, the general principles is same. So what are the general principles? It has to be patient-centered and not a check, check, checklist like you are just taking the checklist, no. Very important is patient-centered. Your patient is in front of you. You need to make sure you're looking after your patient. And those who did not listen to my last previous presentation, I highly recommend go and listen to that one. I think it's recorded. So that it, is, it will be easy for you to follow uh, today's presentation. Okay, the, uh, the next one, establishing repo. Let me tell you something about this. <clears throat> of course, we don't expect we can apply all those things in Bangladesh. Of course not. We have a different socioeconomic context. But there are many things we can adapt from uh, UK system. Okay, many things we can adopt in our clinical practice. Establishing repo is so, so, so important. A repo will make your life easy. As a doctor, it will make your life very, very easy. Let me tell, let me give you an example, a real life example, okay? I had a patient last Thursday and she came from Bangladesh, first time in the UK. Elderly lady, and she has problem with her, some problem with her angina. Okay. So when she came, uh, came to my surgery, what I did, my office is in the upstairs. So I came out of my office, opened the door, greets her, Take her to my room, okay, offer a chair. So what I did, the, from the beginning, I started my consultation. When I walked down to, my, down to, the, to the stairs to the, to the door, to open the door for the patient, I started my consultation. That is, I established the repo. When I say, hello, hi, where's my name, I, I, I mentioned my name, said good morning welcome this is the way the patient feels ease ease okay 
from my experience working some other countries, I saw what we do as a doctor. We sit in our office. There is a list of of the patients. So patient number ten. Somebody is there, Mr. X. Come in. The patient is coming. Sitting. That's all. This is not the repo. The repo is in the UK. You, yeah. Every doctor stand up. They go open the door, greet their patient, bring the patient to to themselves, not their secretary. It is the doctor who go. So this is your communication skill starts. This is even making your patients feel ease. And the, the, the lady I'm mentioning about you, she and her son, her son said to me, I'm very satisfied. I'm very happy. The way you approach my mom. Okay, something she did not experience in the past. Okay, so establishing the repo, as I already mentioned in my real life scenarios, all you need to do, the good morning, open the door. Hello, my name is Dr. Dr. X. Nice to meet you, please come in, take a seat, please. Okay. Now guys, the next one, demonstrating empathy and sympathy. This is the one of the things uh, the IMG doctors there, we, we, we as the IMG doctors, we, uh, sometimes we struggle with. Sympathy and empathy, actually, what are the things? I don't know whether it is true or false. I, 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 I read an article. Sympathy, they showed like, if he, a child is drowning in the water and you are on the shore, standing on the shore, and you said, oh dear, oh dear, the child is drowning. Oh my goodness, this child is drowning. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So you are showing the sympathy. It's right. Uh, and empathy, they said, you are jumping into the, if you know that, of course, you have to know swimming, swimming yourself first. Okay, this is something very important. If don't put yourself at risk if you don't know and if you if you are not quite uh, skillful for that that, that 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 task you jump into the river and save the boy okay or struggle to bring the boy into the shore so this is called empathy you are in the patient's shoes let me tell you from our today's example Okay, you have a chest pain. What the patient will do, a chest pain patient, an angina patient, oh, doctor, I have a pain there. Oh, doctor, I'm so worried. I am so worried. So chest pain patient is really what they're worried about. It's very common. Oh, but I'm, uh, well, am I going to get a heart attack? So there are two types of Q here. One is patient, oh my goodness, his facial expression. Two is I'm worried. So you need to catch up, catch the one non-verbal. Oh, Mr. Smith, Mr. X, I can see that you are in agony. And you mentioned about the worried. What are you worried about? So I reflect, I catch it, I reflect it. Guys, this is called sympathy and empathy. No, I'm worried about my uh, uh, of getting a, a heart attack. Why do you think so? You are having, you are going to get a heart attack. No, doctor, actually, my uh, my friend has the chest problem, and he ended up getting a heart attack. Okay, I understand. I understand your point of view. Yes, if it was me, if it was me, I would think about the same. See, two things: sympathy, empathy, verbal, non-verbal cue. I got it. Secondly, what I did, I put myself into the patient's shoes. That if it was me, I would get the same problem. Okay, then active listening. Very, very important. And you have to show that you are listening to your people, uh, to, the, to your patient, not your head. Okay, okay, then what, then what, okay. So, so a bit way you need to show that you are listening. 
body language very important don't show your boss show that you are a professional doctor sit nicely okay without crossing the try not to cross the long leg and arm okay maintaining eye eye contact okay not to interrupt the patient try not to interrupt the patient your patient can talk 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 but under normal circumstance a patient a person will talk more than 2 minutes 3 minutes he will pause after few seconds for breath right this is the point where you need to interrupt okay mr smith mr john you said this is there anything else you need to talk to me okay guys next two important next two point are very important signposting summarizing signposting summarizing and reasoning okay, quick example okay for example i am i was born and bred in bangladesh english is not my first language that is the true so what happened in the uk sorry give me one second it's very warm So what happened? The accent is different from area to area. I am working with the Irish patient. If I go to Scotland, the accent is different. If you go to Wales, it's a different accent. So sometimes it's difficult for us, especially for the IMG, sometimes to catch up. In this case, summarizing. Okay, Mr. X, so you said you have a chest pain when you walk up the hill, okay, and that makes you to stop uh, walking. Then you take rest. Then you get your uh, you get eased from your pain. Is that right? So oh yes, doctor, it is right. So summarizing, summarizing. It's very, very, uh, very useful. What I found in my everyday practice. Sometimes uh, it's, it's difficult to understand their accents. Some of them. Then uh, signposting. So important. Signposting is important. You are giving a sh a warning shot. Okay, so you said about your chest pain, uh, Mr. Smith. Sometimes what happens actually, our lifestyle can impact on our health. Let me ask you a few questions on your lifestyle. So, chest pain finish, lifestyle big uh, finish, then go. Okay, Mr. Smith, let me ask you a few of your uh, past medical history. Let me ask you a few questions about your family history because these are sometimes very important for us to know when it comes to the question of chest pain. Okay, so now patient know you are going to ask him family history. So in this way, you are not missing uh, vital things at the same time. Your patient is feeling ease. And the reasoning, reasoning, very important. Hello, Mr. Smith. Oh, doctor, yeah, I have chest pain. Do you smoke? Do you drink alcohol? No, no. You can't ask people like this. Well, you can tick the box, but this is not the way you should ask. Reasoning. Why you are asking somebody about his uh, personal things? Yes, Mr. Smith, sometimes our lifestyle can impact on our health. And when it, it comes to the question of chest pain, we tend to ask questions like smoking and uh, about your lifestyle. Is it okay? Oh, yes, doctor, please. In my uh, clinical practice, I never came across any patient said no. If you are reasoning these things, to be honest with you, even who is who is a drug addicted, if you mention reason why you are asking those things, I have I never came across any scenarios that that refused. Okay, guys, the next important thing is game changing factors. Why I am telling it's game changing factors? Yes, red flag. I already mentioned in my last speech, and also in the initial speech I said to you, red flag symptoms, for example, in my case, central chest pain, radiating to the back, radiating to shoulder. These are the things then also you need to ask about pulmonary embolism. Do you have any pain on the back of your leg? Have you had any recent uh, travel? Do you have any cough? Are you coughing up any sputum? So these are the questions if you don't ask a chest pain case, an acute chest pain presentation, you are not asking about PE. 
does your pain move between your shoulder blade and aortic dissection? Do you have any cough, fever, cold? Are you coughing up any sputum pneumonia? If you don't ask those things, you are missing red flag and game changing things. Uh, because in chest pain, what happens actually, people usually think it's a peptic ulcer disease, gastric reflux, and we miss important uh, diagnosis. Then, idea, concern, expectation, eyes, very, very, very important. Your patient thinks he has a heart failure, heart attack. Okay and you did not explain that it is not heart attack, it is a simple reflux, okay? You will go home and think about this, think about this, think about this. Similarly, psychosocial impacts. Uh, uh, from my experience, I'm telling you, the chest pain people, who, uh, the, people the, the patients I see, if they, they have anxiety, they let an anxiety and those many things stuff, uh, mental health stuff. You need to mention, uh, need to think about it. Then the social impacts. If he is a, for example, if he is a driver, lorry driver, truck driver, how this, how your management going to impact on his profession, or how, or if he is a heavy lifter, how his <clears throat> profession going to impact on on the chest pain. So psychosocial impacts, very 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 important. We'll see in details. I already mentioned about signposting. I already mentioned about summarizing and signposting. Okay, so yeah. Open versus closed question. Okay. So let me tell let me tell tell you about this. What is open question and what is closed question? So open question is, Mr. X, how can I help you today? Oh, doctor, I have a chest pain. Oh, yeah. sorry, Mr. X, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Could you tell me a bit more about it? So the patient will tell you, oh, doctor, it's been having for last six months and very worried when I go for exercise, I cannot do my exercise, the pain is coming, it lasts for 10 minutes. Your patient will tell you, in open, uh, in, uh, when you tell, tell me more about this, this, when you ask about this question, when you mention this question, your patient will tell you a bit more. Okay, so as uh, so the beginning of consultation, guys, always remember, ask about open question. How can I help you? I have a chest pain. Could you tell me more about this then? Then you go for the close question. And the close question are very, very important for your, to narrow down your differential diagnosis. As I mentioned earlier, any pain on the back of your leg, any pain uh, when you work upstairs, so you are narrowing down, narrowing down, any cough, cold, running nose, narrowing down, no pneumonia, uh, any pain between your shoulder, so you're narrowing down. Okay, do you smoke? Do you drink alcohol? So risk factors and differential diagnosis important, your close questions, but it has to be followed by your open question, okay? Now, guys, cardiovascular disease, angina pain. I'll try to stick on, uh, on the slides and I'll try, as I mentioned to you, uh, with, uh, I'll try to show you actually the real, the real life scenarios and some mock scenarios, okay? Uh, I think the time is running out. I'll try as much, uh, uh, my best to give you more information, but I can promise in my next session, uh, I'll carry on, okay? So don't be disappointed if there is no mock uh, scenarios will take place today. And I'm very tied up with my time as well. I don't have uh, much time today, but promise we'll continue it. So chest pain scenario. Commonly, it's a cardiovascular patients, cardiovascular disease patients you're gonna see. It's very, very important. According to the recent uh, recent uh, research, 45% of patients who present with chest pain usually they get 
uh, the diagnosis with ischemic heart disease. Okay, so you have to know. I'm very thorough about this. So, what are the points you need to keep in your mind when you it's come to the question of cardiovascular disc, uh, of, of chest pain uh, scenario? What are the risk factors, guys? Cardiovascular risk factors. So we know modifiable risk factors, non-modifiable risk factors. Non-modifiable is your age, your sex, your family history, your ethnicity, that I cannot change. I cannot change. But modifiable risk factors, your diet, smoking, drugs, alcohol, high blood pressure, diabetes, hyperlipidemia. So these are the things I can change. And in your consultation, you need to strike on those things. Okay, you need to strike on those things. If you don't mention lifestyle, your consultation is not effective. A patient with chest pain with uh, possible angina, it's very important, lifestyle. Don't miss those four points. Diet, smoking, alcohol, drugs. And also comorbidities. What are the comorbidities? High blood pressure, diabetes. You need to mention about those things. Okay. And about the non-modifiable, they are also important, guys. How they are so important? Let me tell you a real life, a real life scenario. Example, I had a patient, I think a week ago, a 50 or 55 years old man, ex-nurse practitioner. So what happened, he had a chest pain and the pain is mainly on his right, right side of upper chest. But he has exertional Disney as well, shortness of breath on exertion. But he has a very good lifestyle. His brother, two brothers had heart problem, heart attack. His father has died from heart attack. So what I did, I managed, uh, I, uh, I managed him, I referred him to uh, rapid access uh, chest clinic, okay? Uh, his pain is actually for the last few months. Uh, so I, I referred him to the rapid access chest clinic. And the rapid, uh, I will tell about rapid access chest in, in my later slide, we have all those things, how we manage those things, those patients in, in NHS, you will see it later. And the rapid access chest clinic, they, they declined my referral. They sent it back to me. I was not happy. Why I was not happy? Because this is the patient who has two brothers died from heart, sorry, have heart problem, early age, young age. In the UK, before 60 years of age, if anybody died from heart attack, heart disease, anybody has heart disease, we call it premature cardiac disease, cardiac death. And it's a significant importance, significant important factors in your management. This patient needs to be assessed in the special, specialized center. If a young, young guy suddenly gets synco, fall on the ground, very, very careful. This guy could have WPW, old parkinson white syndrome. This guy could have Hokam, hyper, hyperactive cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. You need to know uh, those things. His family history, very, very important. So in your management, it's so important to refer him to for further assessment. Okay, now it's come to the age. Again, I mentioned to you, it's also important in, 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 in managing high blood pressure cases, especially your age, the age is very important. Uh, above 55 years, below 55 years. Above 55 years, calcium channel broker. Below 55 years, SC inhibitors for hypertension. A patient above 85 years of age, you don't need to do any curious factors assessment. A above 85 years of age, that means he already uh, have a risk factors. So age, so important. Sex, the male are more prone to get heart, heart problem than the female, okay? Ethnicity, so, so, so important. Let me give you an example. If a patient is black Caribbean, your first line choice of drug is calcium channel blocker for managing high blood pressure. 
So ethnicity is important to consider. Okay, as well as it's important because some countries, like in our country, rheumatic fever is so common. Rheumatic heart disease is so common. So non-modifiable disease, uh, sorry, factors will guide you for the management side more. And your modifiable factors, you need to put strike on those things in your consultation. Okay. Okay, last two things, uh, then I'll stop for today. Okay. Medical students, PLAB exam, uh, PLAB candidates, be aware of this mnemonic. P3 Maftosa, I said to, said to you before as well. P3 Maftosa, P for presenting complaint, P for past medical history, P for personal history, medication, allergy, family history, traveling history, occupational history, social history, anything else. If you keep this in your mind during your consultation, this will keep you right. As I said to you, you need to keep you right. You hardly uh, if forget important stuff. Okay, you can apply this, not the, uh, the, the same order, you can apply this according to the situation, but try to keep in your mind. And when uh, you are using this mnemonic for 20, 30 patients, these things will come to your mind automatically. Okay, well, not today. Mnemonic for chest pain, very, very important, guys. Socrates, sight. What is the pain? Onset, when it started. The timing is so important. Chest pain timing, so, so, so important. You will see in the management section why it is so important. Character is so important to narrow down your differential diagnosis. Radiation, then aggravating, aggravating factor and relieving factor. Timing, progression. Is it getting worse over the time? Oh, doctor, it, I, it used to last for five to 10, sorry, five, uh, five minutes. Now it, it lasts longer, even at rest I get it. Even at rest I get it. What does it mean? Your patient is transferred from, uh, from stable angina to unstable angina. Very, very important. Progression. Is your chest pain getting worse over the time? If you don't ask this question, you, you are not gonna catch. Stable angina to unstable angina because if the management is complete, is, is, is a, a big difference. Unstable angina needs more rapid access management. Okay. Uh, so T for timing. Uh, Socrates, a gravitating vector element, I can remember about the E and something else. Okay, there is something else that means you can ask your patient, is there anything that you need to talk to me or is there anything I need to ask you? So sometimes the patient will help you. So what we're gonna do in our next, not today, sorry, not today, next presentation. This is a scenario uh, we'll show you actually how to conduct this consultation followed by, this is a real life scenario guys, managing the NHS and how we'll see how this patient was managed in the NHS. Okay, just uh, mentioning you are an ST1 doctor. So what is ST1? It's really in the UK, F1 and F2, you finish, then you go for specialty training, special training one to eight, depends on specialty. In GP, we have ST1 to 3. In the 3, we call it register level, uh, like in, in Bangladesh. So ST1 to ST8, internal medicine, surgery, or some other specialty. Some specialty is up to ST6. And the good side in the UK training, I'm telling you guys, UK training, if you want to go for a course, for example, I did a diploma in mental health. Mental health diploma from Queens, and it's all paid by... Uh, Northern Ireland Medical and Dental Training Agency. It's all paid. I don't have to pay anything. If you drive more than 40 miles, you'll get paid for your uh, petrol as well. You'll get paid for your accommodation, but it, it differs from trust to trust. It's the very beauty of uh, specialty training in the UK. Financially, you'll be well off. You don't need to worry about, no, don't, you don't need to uh, 
worry about much. So you are an ST1 on call in a district hospital. You receive a letter from a local GP regarding Michael Nixon. Okay, oh, Michael Nixon presented to you in district hospital. He's a 52 years old man, has been having chest pain for the last few months. They got worse on exertion, is with rest, sometimes come on after a heavy meal. He's overweight and smokes. His father died from a myocardial MI at the age of 42. Also brother had heart disease at the younger age. The patient is not taking any medications. His blood pressure today was 175 over 100. Pulse is normal. I'm worried that the chest pain may have a serious underlying cause. This is the scenario we'll, we'll talk about this in our next presentation. And lastly, many, many thanks all guys listening and many, many thanks for Axis Medical School. I'll see you soon. Take care, everyone, please. Thank you. Yes, Shaun. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, sir. At the Kunamade Shate Taka Jano, on a connect to Nobar. Ashakorbo, next day Kuno Axisha, a part of Nadish Takahobe. Shape of Junto Amade Shafi Thakbin, our Punukovaji the Amade system to miss for a Thakin, Tala Abushu YouTube channel take a Dekinibin. Shape of Junto Amade Shafi Thakbin. Okay, thank you, Shawn. Thank you.